This case is a 70-year-old man with essential tremor in his hands for 20 years and a positive family history. On neurologic exam, the patient had bilateral symmetric intention tremor with no signs or symptoms of Parkinsonism and no other focal findings. MRI of the brain was negative for pathology and showed minimal atrophy. The patient had failed conservative therapy and had completed pre-surgery workup successfully. The surgical plan was bilateral VIM deep brain stimulation. Risks included a 1% chance of major bleed, a 3% chance of infection, and a potential benefit of 60 to 80% or more of tremor suppression. Alternatives included observation, further medication, and thalamotomy. Patient chose DBS based on its non-destructive nature and the ability to simultaneously treat both hands. The target and trajectory on both sides were planned preoperatively on brain lab using a 3T MRI, which included a proton density sequence showing the VIM as the third hypodensity from the back of the thalamus per Spiegelman in 2006, as well as DTI imaging that demonstrated the patient's dentorubral thalamic tract shown here in orange. General anesthesia was induced in the anteroom of the MRI, and the MRI table was prepared for surgery with extra padding and a compatible four-point fixation head frame. Once the patient was placed on the MRI table, and secured into the MRI frame, the patient was moved into the MRI bore. The scrub technician prepared the sterile field with titanium instruments and an MRI safe drill in the MRI inner room. Key surgical steps included prepping and draping the site with four blue towels, attaching a curlex to the base of the bed, and to the upper sterile towel for retraction purposes later. We then attached the clear point movable drape to the MRI to establish a moving sterile field. The drape sticks solidly to the head and 10 total tabs are pulled out from under the drape folds. The five black tabs are passed through the bore and attached to the far end of the MRI. The white tabs are then secured at the back of the scanner as seen here. The drape is then expanded, the adhesive removed from the back edges, and the drape is wrapped around the MRI. Two clear point fiducial grids are then centered over the coronal suture bilaterally. Each grid has letters vertically and numbers horizontally for localization. The patient is returned to the MRI ISO center for a T1 volume scan to determine our entry point. The preoperative planned targets and trajectories are loaded into the current clear point software session and are confirmed on this scan as well. ClearPoint software calculates and displays the intended entry point on each grid. The fiducial grid overlay is then removed and a sharp screwdriver tool is used to puncture through the grid base and the scalp and make a mark in the bone at the entry site on both sides. The grid bases are then removed and a 10 blade scalpel is used to make a two to three centimeter incision through the entry point on each side. A Penfield one is used to undermine a pouch around the incision for later coiling of the DBS leads. 
Plastic self-retaining retractors are then placed and secured so that the entry points on the skull can be clearly marked and seen. The clear point frame base is then centered over the entry point and attached to the bone with several screws until the base is fully secure. The frame top with its color-coded knobs is then fit over the base and secured with a locking screw. A hand controller is attached to the frame so that frame adjustments can be made without leaning deep into the bore when the patient is being scanned at the ISO center. After reconfirming the target and the trajectory, a T1 scan series determines the position of the center cannula and provides color-coded instructions on turning the knobs to point the center cannula at our targets on both sides. The final bony entry is remarked. A steri strip is applied to mark the position of the frame top, which is then removed. A six to eight millimeter burr hole is drilled at the entry. The frame top is replaced and realigned and stylet clearance is checked. The stylet should not be touching any bony edges or it can be deflected off target. Another T1 scan is performed to confirm that the cannulas are still pointing at target after drilling. Knob adjustments are made as needed. Dura is then punctured using a clear point knife. A ceramic stylet in a peel away sheath is then inserted through the burr hole entry point down to target. Each stylet has been measured to the appropriate length given by the software to reach the target. A T1 scan confirms that the stylets are at their targets with a minimum error. The stylets are then removed from the peel away sheath and the DBS leads are inserted through the sheath down to the target on each side. The peel away sheath is pulled back until the lead can be seen in the burr hole and the burr hole is filled with bio cement to fixate the lead exit point. While the cement cures, a final T1 scan is performed and merged with the preoperative brain lab plan, ensuring excellent lead placement prior to ending the case. The lead holder is disassembled. The inner lead DBS stylet is removed. and the lead is pulled down out of the frame top, which is then removed. A secondary point of fixation is then placed over the lead using a small titanium plate and two four millimeter screws. Once both DBS leads have been fixed to the skull, the frame bases are removed. Lead tip protectors are applied to the ends of the leads and labeled left and right. They are tied together with a silk suture and directed into a subcutaneous pocket behind the ear for stage two. Excess lead is then coiled in a circular fashion around the burr hole, and the wounds are closed in a standard fashion. Patient is removed from the MRI and from the head frame to finish the case. Essential tremor refers to tremor with action. It typically begins in the hands. It is the most common movement disorder with eight times as many ET patients as Parkinson's patients. It is most common in the elderly. Action tremor makes it difficult to do daily activities, which degrades quality of life. Our gentleman tolerated his three hour surgery well and experienced an excellent suppression and tremor in both hands after programming with no bothersome side effects.
While MRI-guided DVS procedures can offer benefits, all forms of surgeries performed in the brain can pose serious risks. These risks include infection, excessive bleeding, adverse reactions to anesthesia, severe brain injury, or death. It is important to discuss the risks of pursuing a treatment with your physician to understand how they should impact your personal therapy decision. An MRI-guided DBS procedure is not for everyone. You may need to meet certain medical guidelines assessed by your physician. You will likely undergo a screening process to see if MRI-guided DBS is right for you. MRI-guided DBS is an advanced technology that is not available at all care centers and requires approval from your insurance to cover the expense. Check with your health insurance plan or your regional Medicare or Medicaid office to find out if your policy covers this procedure.